What's up guys? It's me, Sir Ernest, and today we will have uh, two examples uh, in relation to uh, special techniques called separation of variables, specifically in spherical coordinate system. So this is problem 3.18 from Griffith's fourth edition. And it reads for letter A, suppose the potential is constant V0 over a surface of the sphere. Use the results of example 3.6 from the book and 3.7 also from the book to find the potential inside and outside the sphere. Okay? So, so I hope that you've already understood the example 3.6 and 3.7. So let's start with inside the sphere. So that's r less than or equal to the radius of the uh, of the spherical surface. So here, since v naught is constant, we can rewrite the coefficient a l as follows. So a l is now equal to 2L plus 1 over 2R to the L times the integral from 0 to pi of V naught theta P sub L of cosine theta sine theta d theta which can be written as 2L plus 1 V naught over 2 R to the L times integral of 0 to pi of PL of cosine theta sine theta D theta. So since P of 0 of cosine theta is equal to 1, so therefore this integral can now be written as P sub 0 of cosine 0 of cosine theta times P of L cosine theta sine theta d theta uh, taking advantage of the orthogonality function uh, really uh, orthogonality between the two functions the Legion polynomials we can equate this or this is now this results to two options 0 and 2 which were in this is 0 if L here is not equal to 0 and it is equal to 2 for L equal to 0. So in other words, only L values or only the coefficients associated with L equal to 0 survives the sum that we're going to show later. So therefore, only a0 will remain and this is equal to uh, so this is using the equation here we have uh, and using the equation here so this is 2 times 0 plus 1 times v naught divided by 2 times r to the 0 times this one is 2 so this is 2 and this is equal to v naught so therefore this tells us that the function the potential v is now equal to a naught 
a0, r0, p0 of cosine theta, which is basically v0. You will notice this is the potential is constant. Okay, and this is throughout the sphere. Okay, now we can do the same, a similar calculation for points outside the sphere. Okay, so let me move it here. Okay, now for outside the sphere. So here, R is greater than the radius of the sphere. So we use this coefficient, BL. So that's 2L plus 1 over 2 times R to the L plus 1 times the integral from 0 to pi of v naught theta pl cosine theta sine theta d theta okay. so it is now equal to 2l plus 1 over 2 r to the l plus 1 because v naught is constant again so this is v naught and this is equal to as uh, similar to what we did earlier by introducing this we have this uh, p not the gen polynomial where for l equal to zero is now equal to p zero cosine theta pl cosine theta sine theta d theta this is from zero to pi so as, as expected, only L equal to 0 survives. Okay? So this is equal to 2, which will cancel here. L is equal to 0. So this is R. So this is B0 is now equal to RB0 of v0 okay so this yields the function potential v equals r over r v so as expected v varies with 1 over r for outside the sphere just like the potential due to a point charge. Also, this shows that at R equal to R, so that means this is at the surface of the sphere, the potential is continuous. So what does it mean? It means that the value of r equal to r would be the same whether we use the solution for inside the sphere or outside the sphere. Okay? Now, next, problem 3.18b. Okay, so it's the same book. So the problem reads, find the potential inside and outside the sphere, uh, a spherical shell that carries a surface charge sigma, not, using the results exp of experiment 3.9. So we do the a similar thing. So inside the sphere, are less than R so AL is equal to 1 
over 2 epsilon naught r to the l minus 1 times integral from 0 to pi of sigma naught pl cosine theta sine theta d theta which gives us uh, sigma naught over 2 epsilon naught r l minus 1 times again similar to what we did earlier we can introduce p0 which is essentially equal to 1 times pl cosine theta sine theta d theta and as you predicted this uh, uh, this integral will be equal to 0 so therefore and only l equal to 0 will survive so a0 will now become r sigma naught over epsilon naught okay, so again uh, l is equal to 0 this one is 2 cancelled with this r to the 0 minus 1 is r to the minus 1 so you get put it back in the numerator so that's r sigma naught epsilon naught so this tells us that for outside the sphere where r is greater than r b l is equal to a l times r 2 l plus 1 so this gives us b naught equals a naught r because l is equal to 0 which is equal to r squared sigma so this is r squared sigma over sigma naught over epsilon thus the potential for inside and outside the shell is given by so this is a naught a0 r to the 0 p0 cosine theta which is r sigma naught over epsilon naught so again this is r less than r On the other hand b0 over r to the 0 plus 1 p0 cosine theta gives us b0 over r or uh, r squared sigma 0 and sigma sigma naught over epsilon naught times 1 over r so this is r for greater than or equal to r now if we're going to recall the following total charge is equal to area times the charge density In this case it's our sigma so area is 4 pi r squared so that's the area of your sphere of your spherical surface and then sigma naught is the density so that means sigma naught is q over area which is 4 pi r squared and if we're going to put it here this becomes what this becomes r over epsilon times q over 4 pi r squared or simply 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught times q 
over R. And for inside the sphere, we have R squared over epsilon R times Q over 4 pi R squared, which is 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught times Q over R. Looks familiar. As you will notice, this is constant. This is a uh, function of R. So you will notice that for a constant surface charge, you will end up with the result similar to or the same, exactly the same as the results we had when we are discussing potential using your usual methods. So this shows the consistency or the appropriateness or the uh, the effectiveness or yeah the effectiveness of this uh, technique separation of variables in calculating potential. As so you will notice that all of this okay entail a very uh, much much easier uh, mathematical solution than the one that we had before. Okay. So that ends our solution to problem 3.18. Don't forget to comment and hit that subscribe button. And see you again in my next video. Bye-bye.